Howdy howdy, my name is Ariel. Welcome to the Cultura Anime blog. So I'm doing this video blog more or less as a response to a video created by Rebecca Crawford. It's called High vs. Low and it's talking about, uh, it's a video talking about the distinctions between high and low culture. I'll link that in this blog post as well so you can check out that original video. So what I'm talking about here is high versus low culture and the distinctions between the two. So I'm an anthropologist and to me, as an anthropologist, culture means anything that is learned or shared. So by this definition, culture contains pretty much anything that you do except for biological processes. Uh, for example, sneezing is not a cultural act, but the way that you've been taught to sneeze and the way that you behave around sneezing is a cultural act. What I realized quickly, though, is that when we're talking about high versus low culture, we're not talking about that type of culture. We're not talking about anything learned and shared. We're talking about something different and very specific. The way that I see it, we could pretty much swap out the word culture here for art or entertainment. Because when you're talking about high or low culture, it seems like most of the time you're talking about works of art or, you know, TV shows or movies or pieces of music, something like that. Culture as a noun, essentially. So when I watched this video uh, talking about high and low culture, honestly the first thing that I kept thinking over and over again was I've never heard culture or pieces of work actively described in terms of being a part of high or low culture. I also couldn't stop thinking that using these terms is incredibly problematic. And when I say problematic, I mean you're creating a dichotomy. You're saying, here's all this stuff that's high culture, and here's all this stuff that's low culture. And low culture obviously has a negative connotation. But also, a lot of times it's simply a matter of access to resources, and the average person does not have access to high culture, which is why I think it's problematic to kind of judge people who don't consume high culture, because it's probably not available to them. So already I hate this terminology. I like, let's get rid of it. I'm, I'm down. And so, naturally, I let out a huge sigh of relief when, at the end of the video, the makers, uh, the makers asked, do these labels work? And they asked, if we get rid of them, what words should we use to talk about culture? Well, so, yes, as you know, my initial reaction is, no, these labels do not work. Let's kill them. Using these terms is, at best, pointless and, at the very worst, uh, super offensive and harmful. But I tend to react strongly and negatively when anyone ever tries to apply a dichotomy to describing anything, because it's simply that nothing is that simple. For example, something like the opera may be considered high culture. However, I can uh, get my fancy laptop here and I can look up pretty much any operatic song or performance and then watch it from my own home. When the dang internet's not busted. Is it still high culture? Has it now become low culture because it's so accessible? Opera performances. Now in colorful new styles. Gotta watch the commercials first. This is an entire performance of the opera Ada at the San Francisco Opera starring Luciano Pavarotti. And it's all here, two hours and 43 minutes. Though I can watch this whole thing. And, and that's freaking crazy. Yeah, come in. Uh, so my, my roommate has walked in on the middle of filming this video blog. So that means it's time for Ask My Roommate How He Feels About a Topic. Great. So, Eve, mm -hmm. what, what does it mean, what is uh, high culture to you? What, would, what is something that you would put into, into the grouping of high culture? Uh, academia. Academia? Yeah. Would you care to elaborate? Because it's like... Uh, you need a lot of money and a lot of access to a lot of things, other things in high culture, like art and museums and stuff, for like academia to even make sense. So when we're talking about high culture, we're kind of talking about things that are like far removed and uh, not, yeah. for, not for everybody. Yeah. Specifically for few people. Yeah. Thank you, Evan. You're welcome. <laughs> you can go back to your... To your low cultural activities. Well. What I want to ask now, which is something that my lovely roommate kind of addressed, is what allows something to even be high culture in the first place? Does it have to be expensive? Because with a lot of these things, like the opera, it's kind of my only example, as you can see, the opera is very expensive. You can't just pop up, pop, pop into an opera for 250. Maybe you can. I don't know. Let me know if that's a thing that exists. 